Good evening, good evening. Hello, beautiful people. Tanika Maria, I very rarely do an Instagram live and this will go on my YouTube channel for the, those people on YouTube who are gonna be watching this on the replay. I rarely do videos at 9.15 at night. Usually, you know, this is an abnormality for me, but I had a schedule mishap and kind of had to uh, move things around because I thought I was gonna be somewhere else. So that's why it's so late. But at any rate, this video, if you are believing, if you are praying for kingdom love, if you are praying for love and praying to level up your life, if that's part of your goals for 2022 and what you're always been in your heart to do, then there are some things that you need to expect to happen, right? There are things that you need to count on that will happen if that's really the true desire of your heart. But before I get into that, my name is Tanika Maria. I'm a certified Christian life coach, author, speaker. I'm a podcaster and I'm about helping women. I work with women who want to heal their emotions, bounce back and level up in their life and love and relationships and purpose in, in their calling and do it in a healthy way where we walk in wholeness, peace and clarity. I'm about getting real, really getting real and being healed from the inside out. And this is a process. This is a journey. This is not something that happens instantaneously. This is something that's ongoing until you leave this expression of life. This is something that goes on in your life until you leave this earth. Getting real, being healed, letting that healing seal. Let God show you, you go up another level, then another layer. With every level, there's another layer of healing. So if you are praying and looking to level up in love, you want a kingdom love and you want to level up your life, then what you need to be prepared to do, you need to expect this one big thing. Let me break this down because see, we think we're ready for love. We think we're ready for the next level, but the truth be told, our hearts are not ready to handle the weight of authentic partnership. Our hearts are not ready for the weight of what we're praying for. Sometimes we don't have the emotional and spiritual fortitude and capacity for the things that we're asking for. And especially when it comes to matters of the heart, when it comes to love, kingdom love, there's a degree of sacrifice. There is compassion. There is forgiveness. And there is an understanding that comes with that. You can't be immature. Love is not a feeling. Love is not a tingly feeling. It's not a longing. It's more than just longings and desires and sexual feelings and lust and attraction and arousal. Love is not blind. Love is not nonsensical and willy-nilly because see, God is love. And the last time I checked, God is not blind because you know, they say that saying love is blind. Love is not blind. Real love operates in light and knowledge, light and knowledge. And so real love, godly love, kingdom love, and to level up in it and to level up in purpose, that requires light that requires knowledge. It's, it's not characterized by instability, codependency and unstable emotions and being immature and being small and triggered up. That's not love. That's not love. And so to love the way God loves and to level up in the way that he would have us to go. And I'm going somewhere. We're going to unpack this. This is what you need to expect. It's going to require a fundamental transformation of your heart. And how does that happen? To retain, sustain, to give and receive love, retain and sustain love, to give and receive at the level you'll be given and receiving when you go up to the next level. When I say next level, I mean in every area because that next level is already in you, but it needs to be expressed. And for it to be expressed, your heart has to be expanded. For your next level and for love to be expressed in your life, your heart has to be expanded to handle that, right? And so the first thing, so if you're praying for kingdom love, you're praying to level up. The very first thing, the main thing, the one thing that you can expect to happen is for God to begin the process of expanding your heart. Your heart has to be expanded. He has to enlarge and expand 
your heart. So let's define enlarge. Let's define enlarge. Enlarge means to make bigger, to become more extensive, to increase in extent, to increase in bulk, to augment, to expand the capacity of, to amplify, right? So when, when, when we say enlarge my heart, my heart has to be enlarged for what I'm praying for. If I want kingdom love, if I want to level up in business, level up in my ministry, level up in my calling, my heart literally has to grow big enough on the inside, right? It has to be augmented. My heart has to be amplified. Psalm 119.32 says, I shall run the way of your commandments for you will enlarge my heart. Another version of this, the MEV, and I'm not quite sure what the MEV stands for, the M. It says, I will run in the way of your commandments when you set my heart free. So an enlarged heart is a free heart. So what does that mean? If my heart is not enlarged, if my heart is small and bound up, guess, guess what? I can't expect to walk in kingdom love. I can't expect to fully, fully show up and level up in my purpose. I can pray. I can get into every prophetic word. I can get on a thousand master classes. But until I go through the process of allowing my heart to be expanded, to be expanded, then the, the, what I'm praying for will not show up. I may want to level up, level up in love, level up in my life, level up in my business, my profession, my career. But if my heart is tiny and shrunk up with woundedness and drama and trauma, real love can't flow in a tiny, shrunken, hungry, broken heart. So if you are praying, if you're praying, if you've been believing, if you've been sort of hoping and wishing and reading and Googling, YouTubing, scrolling, you got a case of the scrolliosis and you just scrolling and scrolling and reading and scrolling and on everybody's page, but you still, amen, thank you. Thank you for joining. But you still have not done the hard work. You, you're, you're praying, you're believing, you're seeking, you're consuming a lot of content. But for you to really level up in love, God has to do, you have to cooperate with God to expand the inner territory of your heart and your mind. And so heart enlargement, because the Bible says in Psalm 119, 32, Lord, I shall run the way of your commandments for you will enlarge my heart. So if my heart is small, a, a, Love can't really flow through right. If it's really enlarged, if my heart is big enough, it can handle a bigger flow. I want a big flow. And I heard one of my mentors say, we pray to God for a mansion sized blessing, but our heart is like a little tiny closet. We pray to God for this big mansion sized blessing. And he's looking at us and he's like, baby, your heart, your capacity, for me to get to you this mansion size blessing, this love, this business, this purpose, this idea, this dream in your heart, it's a mansion size thing, but on the inside, you're a little closet, right? Can love and purpose and calling flow in a tiny, wounded, rejected, abandoned, and hungry heart? What do I mean when I say hungry heart? That's the heart that's always striving, striving and seeking for attention, seeking for affection, seeking for validation, seeking for approval. The hungry, broken heart. And whenever I'm in that place, whenever I'm in that place, I'm not ready for love. The more I'm striving and struggling, the tinier my heart is getting. The more I'm striving and struggling and being all anxious and being out of shape, comparing my situation and just all of that noise, as long as I'm on the frequency and in the spirit of the striving and the struggling and being hungry and thirsty for attention and validation and people pleasing and approving and I'm wounded, I'm rejected, my heart is not ready. My heart is not ready as long as I'm in that energy of striving for love, as long as I'm struggling to be seen. My heart is not ready. If you are here and you are praying for kingdom love, you are praying for purpose, you're praying, okay, God, I want to level up. I want to level up, level up, level up. Then that means that you are in, you are ready to go through the process of your heart being expanded. So heart enlargement, what do I mean? What are you talking about, Tanika? 
It involves the process of preparing our hearts for more of God's love so that we can not only be prepared for healthy relationships, but for higher purpose, more of his call, his plan, his purposes in, in the earth. And so I want to ask you on tonight, is your heart big or is it small? Is it crowded with residue? Is it crowded with unwanted memories and triggers and flashbacks of what happened with that ex? That ex-husband, that ex-boyfriend, that ex-fiance, that ex-girlfriend, whoever man, whoever's listening on tonight who will catch the replay. Is my heart small? Because I want a mansion-sized blessing, but my heart is like a tiny little filled up closet filled up with all of this baggage, all of these soul ties, all of this stuff, right? But we're praying to God for this mansion-sized blessing. What are the things that clog up our heart? What are the things that block the flow of kingdom love? We want kingdom marriage, kingdom love. We want these healthy relationships. We don't want to attract toxic dynamics that drain us. These toxic, draining, diminishing, weird, jacked up situationships, right? That's coming, that's coming from having a tiny heart. That's tiny heart. Yes, Lord. I see you guys. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your comments. And I'll open it up for questions. I'm going to wrap this up soon. But the things that clog up our heart, the things that keep my heart small, I'm praying for love. I'm believing for love. I want to have a good relationship. I want to do this dream in my life. I feel like I can do it. God gave me this idea. I know I can do it, but I'm scary. And I'm scared about what mama going to think and the people at work going to think and my friends and my family, what they going to think. All of that is part of this, what I call having that tiny, small, hungry, wounded type of a heart that's really not ready to handle the weight of it because it's so full of things like unconfessed sin. Let's be real. And you know, when I say confess, when I say confess sin, I'm just meaning just simply turn. Like God, you know, that wasn't right. But I'm hanging on to this and I'm carrying some guilt, shame, and condemnation. Let me release that. Pride, unforgiveness, fear, and insecurity bitterness, um, all of this hopelessness and sorrow, being brokenhearted, hard and harsh and crude and rude because of being hurt and burnt. Because if you've been burnt, you can turn up kind of hard. Just being numb, being hopeless and feeling numb like you can't feel anything. Just checking out, right? Repressing your pain, riding over the top of the pain, Netflix and wine and scroliosis. I call it, you know, scroliosis on social media. Just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And if you got quiet by yourself without your phone and the lights are off and there's no TV and there's no iPhone and there's no Android, then you start feeling restless and shiftless and antless and you don't know what to do with yourself. That's a sign that you got some soul work to do. If you can't just be comfortable in your own presence and just quiet and in just stillness and you're not all flustered with your cell phone and you're not trying to flip channels and you're not trying to busy yourself and eat and do this and that, if you can just learn to sit still, people run from themselves. And when you run from yourself, you disconnect from yourself. And when you're disconnecting and running from your own self, how are you in a position to receive anything? How are you in a position to really receive from God? How are you in a position to have a healthy romantic relationship when you're running from your own self? We run, because see, if I'm not chasing, if I'm not set, settling my soul issues within myself and I start chasing a relationship or I chase a platform to feel that I'm that need, I'm going to be right where I started. My heart gets even smaller. It shrinks. And so these heart level issues must be exposed. The heart has to be clean. And when they're worked through by by healing, by deliverance, by coaching, by therapy, by counseling, then that's how we make our hearts bigger. Most people run from it. Most people don't want to do no kind of work at all. They don't want to sit with themselves. They think if they, they sit with themselves and be by themselves, along with themselves, and if they start feeling anxious and sad, they want to check out of it because they don't want to feel it. You're scared of feeling. You are a human being. You're a human being. You have emotions that need to be expressed. And when you feel a feeling, you're not going to drop dead because you felt your feelings. 
Come on. I'm talking to somebody. You're not going to drop dead. The world is not going to end because you felt all those sad feelings and you finally let that stuff bubble on up out of you. And you finally cried. You finally cussed. You finally let it come out. Do you know how much better you're going to feel? Can you sit with your own soul? But we want everybody else to sit. Do I know me? Can I sit with me? But I want a man to sit with me. Can I sit with myself and say, girl, let me give you, let, let me receive the comfort of God. Let me receive the peace of God. Let me be kind enough and compassionate with my own soul to set aside time with me, myself, and I, me, myself, and God, and let myself cry. Do I have enough dignity? Am I worthy of my own tears? Will I give myself the dignity to sit with my own soul or I'm going to go chase behind a man? Am I going to chase behind a platform? Am I going to chase behind some coin? Can I give my soul the dignity? Can I give my soul that? And when you take the time to do that with your own heart, then that's when your heart begins to slowly expand and enlarge for the love and the purpose that you've been praying for. When you finally make an appointment with that pain and quit running from yourself, when you sit down with God and stop running for the hills, that's when peace starts coming in. That's when your soul begins to get settled. And then that's when the pain begins to purify for purpose. Amen. I see you aim high. Amen, lady. I'm glad this is helping you. Heart enlargement or expansion is necessary for you to flow in purpose, for you to really receive God's love so that you can be like him according to John 3, 16, for he is love, right? For you to love the people that you're called to serve, and that would include a spouse, that would include your family, that would include everybody that's connected to your voice and to that dream and to that calling of God on your life. Because when your heart is expanded, you'll be able to serve them better. When your heart is expanded and when you've made an appointment with that pain, and when you start running from yourself, that's when you're you're in a better position to really to, to really flow in your purpose. And every time my heart expands, I get a little wiser. Every time my heart grows because I let go of the debris and the scars and the residues and the triggers and the flashback and that old pain and that old story and those old anxieties. Every time I let go of striving and struggling and chasing and stuff. I've grown in wisdom. I'm stronger and I'm wiser. It says in Proverbs 16, 21, the wise in heart are discerning, right? And then Psalm 90, 12, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. So the Bible references a heart of wisdom. And then he, the Bible also says the wise in heart. So if I... I want to be a wise hearted woman, but for me to be wise, my heart has to be big enough to hold wisdom. God is love and he's also wisdom. And I have to expand. I have to expand my heart, let go of some of this pain, quit running from myself so that I can receive wisdom from the pain that I learned through, right? That I walked through. So if you really, really, really are serious about kingdom love, you're serious about leveling, leveling up, then you got to go through the heart expansion process. There's no escaping it. See, we want to level up and we want a kingdom marriage and I want to up level and I want to come up and I want to bounce back. But I want to keep running for myself. I want to keep numbing. I want to keep checking out. I want to stay in comparison. I want to stay stuck with my old story. I don't have I don't want to sit by myself with just me and God and find out what makes my soul happy. But I want a man to sit with me and know I, I don't want to have the compassion and kindness and receive the comfort of God and just learn how to sit in that for myself. But I want somebody else to pump me up and do that for me. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. For what God called you to, you have to learn to sit in that for yourself, right? We have to do that. And see, you have to submit. If I want a fruitful life, a focused life, a life of peace, even in the midst of all my drama and trauma, that, that stuff and circumstances, my heart got to start getting expanded. 
and it's not a pretty process. It's not painful, but it's very necessary and it produces fruit. So how does our heart get expanded? How does we, how do we, we do this, right? How does God, what does God use to expand our hearts? Of course, he uses the spiritual disciplines, prayer, fasting, studying the word, being in fellowship and in community with other people. That's one way that you expand your heart. The second way that your heart is expanded is actually going through tests, passing tests and temptations, going through various circumstances where you meet and see yourself. I have to go through circumstances where I meet and see myself. And those are the circumstances that will expand my heart so that I can see what's in my heart, right? I can see what's in my heart. Also getting still, getting still so that I can know and understand myself. How can I expect to be equally yoked with someone else when I'm not not even yoked with myself? How am I expecting to be connected with another human being, but I'm not even connected within myself, but yet I'm believing, yet I'm praying for love and to be up level in my life. I want to level up in all areas, but I don't know me. I don't know who I am. So how does our heart get get expanded through those disciplines? I got to learn myself. I got to know myself. I got to quit running from myself and abandoning myself. I got to learn how to sit with my pain. I got to realize that if I cry and be by myself and feel my feelings, that I'm not going to drop dead because I cried. That every time I let those feelings pass, that I'm getting stronger. Every time I do that, my heart is expanding. My heart is expanding for the weight. My heart is expanding for the mantle, for the cause for the level of love that I deserve because I'm letting my heart grow in the waiting. I'm letting my heart be expanded and enlarged when I stop striving and running and struggling and being in anxiety and in the frequency of the striving, that striving spirit, that striving and chasing spirit. All that does is diminish and make your heart smaller. All it does, whenever I'm in striving mode, whenever I'm in struggling mode, whenever I'm in this anxiety, I'm just shrinking my heart. I'm shrinking my heart. I'm diminishing myself. I'm disconnecting myself from myself. And then I wonder why. And then now comparison kicks in because now I'm looking at other people's lanes and what's going on on their pages and their feeds and their life and their Facebook. But I can't focus on mine. This is what this is why it's so important to go through the process. So when you pray for love, when you pray for marriage, when you pray for your business to get big, when you pray for your side hustle to increase, when you pray, God, I want to write my book. I want to start my program. I want to start my nonprofit. Then expect to go to, through the process of heart expansion. Expect for God to deal with those areas of your life where your heart is being tiny. I want a mansion size blessing. But my heart is the size of a little closet. Hey there, Miana. My heart is the size of a tiny closet. I want a mansion-sized blessing. But my heart is like this, full of drama, trauma, unforgiveness, bitterness, soul ties, unwanted memories, triggers. So we say no to struggling and striving. I don't know about you. How many of y'all want to start receiving and arriving? I know what it's like to be in that striving and struggling frequency, in that striving and struggling spirit, always wondering, always fretting, always in a stew. Why God, why? And when God, when? Part of the process of expanding your heart for love, expanding your heart for purpose is surrendering to the season that you're in. Come on. Yes, Lord. Yes, aim high. Yes, yes. Failure to submit to the process of expanding your heart for the weight. Because see, what God has for you, it has a weight to it. And so our fragile, little, tiny, wounded, hungry hearts do not have the weight for the level of purpose that we're praying for. The things we're praying for, because we're not fully healed, because we're disconnected, because we tend to run from our pain, It makes our hearts fragile where we can't handle the weight because if you don't have faith enough, hear me well, if I don't even have faith enough that God can handle my heart when I'm by myself, I don't have my cell phone, I'm not watching TV and if I'm sitting in the room by myself and I have all these anxious feelings and I start getting restless, 
and I'm not trying to scroll on my phone. I'm not trying to watch TV. I'm not trying to eat and do this, that, and the third. And I start feeling all anxious. If I don't have the faith in that moment that God can handle the heart, my heart, handle my pain, and give myself the dignity and the compassion as a human being to cry that out. If I don't even have faith to do that, then how am I going to have faith to have a big time business? How am I going to have faith to have a, 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 a real relationship with a true kingdom purpose partner that's done their inner healing work and they're facing themselves and dealing with their stuff? What, how, what am I going to do? Because if you ran into that person, you would run, you would repress, you would probably sabotage it. You would sabotage it because the unworthiness, all that shame, all this mess in our hearts would sabotage. We will either run from it or ruin it. We will run from it or ruin it. Come on now. Yes. Yeah, I see you, Rihanna. I see you. Failure to submit to the process of expanding your heart will cause you to forfeit or diminish or not even walk in your purpose. You can miss out on opportunities. This is number two. Miss out on opportunities because of unprocessed pain and heart issues. I know. I know. I have missed out on, uh, on opportunities because of being scary. I have missed out on opportunities because of being worried about what people think or like not trusting, getting all of these vain imaginations and stories in my head because of the past, because of what happened in previous situations. I would take it into the next situation and I would miss opportunities unintentionally and unwittingly. Blessings to you. Hey, Philip. Uh, blessings to you. I would just miss opportunities. So whenever my heart is tiny, hard because of woundedness, because I have a hungry heart, because I'm striving, um, you know, we either if we're not chasing for if if the heart is not really healed and you got a hungry heart, what I call that hungry heart, because it's not full. Because see, we want to be full wholehearted people, not broken and hungry hearted people. But if my heart is hungry, then if I'm not chasing for love, I'm going to chase for, I'm going to chase for money. I'm going to chase for a platform. I'll chase every, I'm going to chase, you're going to be chasing and striving. So we want to get that heart full and whole so that we don't miss opportunities. We don't forfeit our purpose. We won't miss out on real love by self-sabotaging it, running from it or ruin it. Or we, we miss out on love because we stay in dead in relationships because of unworthiness. We think that's all we, we're settling, right? Because an unhealthy heart will always inevitably attract another unhealthy heart. So remember my relationship equation, right? An unhealthy me plus unhealthy he will equal an unhealthy we. Right. And this is I'm talking to, to the women, but men, you know, it goes both ways. An unhealthy she plus an unhealthy he will equal an unhealthy we. I can't get to an unhealthy. I can't get to a healthy we unless I first deal with me. Right. So if you have two unhealthy, toxic, hungry hearts, we're both we're both we're both striving in the relationship. We're not coming to the relationship with the full wholehearted with love to give. I'm coming to the relationship like this right? That's not, that's not good. That is not a good look, right? So if I want to level up in life, I want to level up in love. I want to level up in purpose. I have to, I have to allow God to expand my heart. And that heart expansion process is not pretty and it can be painful, but the pain will purify those triggers out. It will purify the residue. It'll purify what happened with that ex. If you're willing to sit with yourself, sit with God, get the therapy, get the coaching, get the counseling, read the books when you, and not check out. Don't check out, but check in with yourself. What's going, what's going on? What's, what's going on in here? How is your heart moving today? What have been the movements of your heart on today? My, my heart kind of moved over to jealousy. My heart moved to hopelessness. My heart moved to being pissed off and mad. My heart moved here and my heart moved there. What are the movements of your heart? Do you sit there and find out? Mm-hmm. Yeah, these are deep questions, right? 
But the thing about it is, if you don't answer those questions with you, you know, I need to answer those questions with me, myself and God, right? I can't go to a man and be asking a man to expect him to have osmosis, expecting him to be God. He got all his stuff. And I and here I come with all my neediness, all my baggage, all my little tiny, hungry, broken heart. And I'm running for myself and I'm taking these and I'm, I'm expecting him for my good morning text to pump me up every day and validate me but i won't sit with myself and validate myself why am i why do we expect another human being to do for us what we won't do for ourselves we're talking about the process of expanding and enlarging our hearts for love so i the, the thing about it is it's time to get freed up it's time to really begin to take the issues of our heart very seriously. So don't go long periods of time without checking in with yourself. Checking in with what, what's going on in my heart. How is my heart moving? God, what's the condition of my heart? Is my heart shrinking? Is my heart diminishing? What's going on in here? What are all these feelings? Am I repressing my feelings? Am I riding over the top of my pain? Am I just doing Netflix and wine and chilling? And I got scrolliosis on Instagram where I just scroll all day. I, you know, I have to guard my heart. I get scrolliosis. Don't think, guys, don't think that I'm Miss Expert here. This is something I have to practice daily. This is a daily practice. Checking your heart is every day. Every day. But see, it's so easy to ignore to numb, to check out. We use food, we use our children, we use our work, we use our platform. And the thing about it is, if you're a high achieving person, if you're a go-getter and you like to get things done, then you can use that. You can use your platform. You can use the very business and the very dream and the very thing that God gave you to do to hide behind. It can You can get so caught up in it that your heart gets goes unchecked. Your heart will be unchecked. So we must tend to our hearts daily. This is the motives, the intents, the purposes, and the movements of my heart. And if my heart is moving in bitterness, if my heart is moving in unforgiveness, if my heart is moving in comparison, if my heart has a lot of vain imaginations, if my heart has just got all this stuff going on, it's shrinking. And those are the things that need to be cleaned out in order to be expanded for the love and the purpose and the call. And then as I wrap this up, as our hearts become enlarged, then, you know, I love that scripture, 1 Peter 5, 10, and it says, and the God of all grace, who called you into his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, shall himself perfect, perfect, establish and strengthen you. After you have suffered a while, then you'll be established. So it's like once my heart's been enlarged from the pain, once I've let God, I felt my pain, I felt my feelings, I didn't run for myself, I didn't check out, I didn't try to use a relationship to run for myself, I didn't try to use my job, my work, my children, my church work, my ministry, this, that, and the third to try to run away. And I actually went and got some therapy and some coaching and I'd read and study and pray and cry. Pray and cry and Jonah, read and study, pray, cry, Jonah, read, study, go to church, pray, cry. And do all of that. And my heart begins to expand. My heart grows. And the Bible says in the Amplified Version in uh, James, but let, let patience have full play and do a thorough work that you may be perfect and entire, lacking in nothing, complete. So there's an establishment and there's a completion that comes when you finally allow your heart to be enlarged. And again, it's a daily thing. It's an ongoing process until we meet our maker, until we leave this expression of life on earth, right? My heart will be daily be expanded as I'm daily checking my heart, as I'm daily going before the Father, as I daily am sitting with myself, discerning the movements of my heart. And what's really going on with me and knowing myself. And the more I do that, the more established I become in who I am. The more established I become in my identity. After I have endured, there's a settlement. After I have endured, there's a completion. But only after you endure the process of letting God enlarge your heart.
Amen. So I hope this blessed somebody on tonight. I wanted to come out here and share these basic concepts and principles of what it means to really check our hearts and for God to allow God in. Like, God, how is my heart moving? What's going on? And my heart's been shrinking and my heart is tiny and I'm praying for a mansion-sized blessing, but my heart is the size of a little closet. God, what gives? And so in that, what I want you to do, and here's what, here, you know, I always have something. And as I close this out, if you have some questions, thank you. Thank you for your kind words, Philip. Thank you guys for being here, whoever's still on here listening. Thank you so much. But for my ladies, for, for my leaders, for my influencers, for women of purpose, you are in a place where you know you got some stuff going on in your heart. I have a free masterclass coming up, me and Minister Jennifer Wendy Brown. And I'll put the flyer up, but the link is already in my bio, at my link in my bio. The Heart Check Masterclass. The Heart Check Masterclass. Thank you, Miana. Well, I don't I hope you're still here. But blessings to you all. The Heart Check Masterclass. And what this is about, we're going to talk about the matters of the heart and emotions for women of influence that really can sabotage your brand, your ministry, and your business if it's left unchecked. We'll be going into areas of the heart, if they're left unchecked, will mess up your brand, mess up how you're showing up. It's going to affect how you show up in those areas. And we're going to share strategies in this masterclass on what you can do now to, to, to feel better immediately, to clear your heart, get back into alignment, and learn how God wants you to think, feel, and be as you go to your next level. So this masterclass is about learning about the places in our emotions and in our thinking that if it's left unchecked can sabotage us in love, business, ministry, and our brand. And then we're going to learn strategies. So, okay, I want to clear my heart. Now, now I want to get back into alignment. How to do that. And you cannot miss this class if you're a professional, leader, influencer, creator, businesswoman, who, whatever status you are, you can't miss this. If you've been in a place where you've had setback after setback and now you're burned out, you cannot miss this class. If you feel some pain, you got some stuff in your heart, but because of what you're doing, because you got so many people depending on you and people following you and looking up to you and depending on you, you just keep pushing past that pain. And you just keep going and going and going and you still got pain in, in your heart. This is for you. This is for you if you've been doing some of your healing work, but you still got unwanted memories. You still got flashbacks. You got triggers. You got things going on on the inside and you just haven't had a safe place to really sit and to just heal and to learn. And this is about checking your heart. God, what are the movements of my heart? What's in here unchecked that's holding me back? What is in my heart that's keeping me small and shrunken? What is it? Why is my heart tiny and strong, tiny and small? I'm asking you for all of these big and wonderful things, but my heart can't even handle the weight of it. My heart cannot handle the weight of it. If you're in that place, then this free, absolutely free masterclass is for you. The link is in my bio. It is March 26, which is a Saturday, 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern time on Zoom. And so you can click the link in my bio, the heart, the heart check masterclass experience and go ahead and sign up and register because we have limited seatings. And I want this to be a, a safe place for women, women that don't have a safe place, women who are in leadership, women who are movers and shakers and who are doing a lot of things. So you could be professional on your job, on your nine to five, whatever, however you are showing up, but you still got some unchecked stuff that's dragging you down. You need to be in this class. The link is in my bio. I'm going to put the flyer up after I get off this live, but I want you to sign up, share this live, Stay connected, follow me on Instagram, and eventually Minister Jennifer Wendy Brown and myself, we're gonna be coming out here together live, probably sometime in March, but I'll be coming out here talking more about 
you know, I need to be understanding the movements of my heart. What I need to be checking for in my heart. How can I expand my heart? What are the issues that are blocking in my heart that's keeping my heart small and tiny and hard? Because a small, tiny, hard-hearted woman cannot get far, right? And so we'll sabotage ourselves. So aim high, dream big. You need to get in. Go ahead and sign up now, honey. Sign up now. Sign up. Get in on the list. So that you can stay connected when we finally have this heart check masterclass because we want you to prosper and be in health. We want sustainable peace. If nothing else I've learned, I had to get to the point like, girl, you know what? It's, it's safer to surrender to God. It's safer to surrender. Then I got to the point where I was like, if surrendering to God and his will in his life, and his will for my life means peace, then so be it. Because my little striving, struggling ways of chasing and striving, striving to make this happen and chasing for that and striving for that. You too, Philip, was just making me not have peace. And I'm like, God, you know what? If surrender means I can just be, be at peace because I belong to you and I, I need for my heart to have peace, then so be it. So be it. Amen. So we want peace. I want, we want sustainable peace. We want wholeness and we want clarity. Nothing in the world is more sexier than peace and clarity and being whole. So sign up for the class. Blessings and abundance to you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here, Philip. Thank you for being here. Aim high, dream big. I don't know your first name. But anyway, blessings to you. And I'll be back out here again soon, you guys. Have a great, great evening. Take care.